Welcome to Beginning, Intermediate, and Advanced Playwriting, Advanced Playwriting, Lesson 3.3, The Eighth and Ninth Functions of Dialogue, Jest, and Theatricality. The story of the play is the delivery system for the true purpose of theater, which is to convey passion to the audience. The actors on stage are not simply enacting the story. They are, with all their beings and all their craft, conveying as truly and strongly as they can the passions of the characters as they undergo the events of the play. Actors work from their gut through their emotions. It is their craft to communicate layers of emotional experience to the audience as directly and purely as a note of music. Where does this passion originate? With the playwright. If the passion is not in the script, the actor cannot manufacture it. A character has been fired from her job after reporting that her supervisor raped her and comes home to find that her husband of 24 years is packing up to leave her for a younger woman. There is a noise that expresses the emotions that are felt under these circumstances. When you put your character into a dire situation, listen for that noise that would come from her gut if she expressed her feelings without words. When you write the words that she will speak to her husband, listen for that sound. Then write the words that she says. If you do it correctly, when the words are read aloud, even cold, that underlying noise of passion and pain will be evoked. When an actor takes that situation onto her body, into her gut, the words she says will release that sound. What she is expressing with her body and the sounds coming out of her mouth will be in tune. This is the perfect expression of that character's experience, made by the actor and the playwright working together, and the audience will receive it on every level. When you are writing your play with a significant tension level from beginning to end, every word spoken when written in this manner will communicate on three levels to the audience. Your play will be made of power and passion, and when the actors inhabit it, that sound will be heard. Don't settle for less. That is the music of passion and pain, and that is what we are really writing. And that is the song that actors are longing to sing, because the communication of that music to the audience is perfect. So, when you write the words that that woman speaks to her husband, listen for that noise. Encapsulate it with words. When an actor speaks the words, that noise will be released. We are not simply writing words. As discussed in Lesson 2.1, each line of dialogue, every word in the play, tells the story of the play to the audience. It tells what kind of character is speaking. It tells the actor what the character is thinking, what she is feeling, and what she is doing. It provides the tempo of the play, and when done exquisitely, it will also provide the emotional tone. But at its base, it defines for the actor the passion which compels her thoughts and actions. When she speaks the words, the passion is there. To say that the playwright only writes the words of a play is like saying that what the actor does is make faces. Actors use passion as a weapon to affect the other actor and to affect themselves. Every word they wield on stage should have an effect on the story, on the other characters, on their own feelings and situation. Thus, the story is driven forward with the maximum impact. When you are writing a scene, make sure that each line you write has this kind of power. If it does not, look first to the stakes in the scene. How big a problem is on stage right now? What are the consequences to the character? If the consequences are not imminent, if they are not affecting the character, then alter the story so that the problem is affecting everyone on stage. Western theater began as song and poetry. For more than a millennium, playwrights commonly wrote their plays in verse. This is our heritage. Nowadays, verse for the most part is too narrow a stricture for the momentum we want in our plays. Writing in verse does, however, make the writer choose each word with care. Now that the whole play need not be in verse, word choice and the rhythm of the sound of the words can add additional layers to a scene. If you look at the words in a scene as percussion, 
riffing between the characters. You can create an additional aspect to your scene below the level of consciousness. Writing the words as percussion can also guide your actor to exactly how you want the line said. It is not the line itself that is the most theatrical. It is the effect that the line has on the other characters. When a character says something important, the audience will look to the other characters for their reaction. In Lesson 1.2, it was suggested that the playwright break up multi-sentence lines. If you write in a reaction for the other character, then you are building that theatricality into the scene. It also increases the tempo of the scene to have the lines wing back and forth among the characters instead of having one character speak for a long time. When a character does speak several sentences in a row, it should be like an aria in opera. It should be important, and something needs to have changed by the end of it. A monologue is like a play in itself. It has a beginning, a middle, and an end, and the character, if not all the characters, if not the play itself, should be changed because of it. If the play is to come to a stop while the character speaks for a time, then what he says needs to be important enough, powerful enough, moving enough to warrant it. John Donne wrote, Fire ever doth aspire, and makes all like itself, turns all to fire. The passion you write into your play is like setting fires. Make sure that they are on stage, not somewhere off stage, and especially not in the past. Keep those actors scorching, that's the way they like it. And they like it because their pain is the most effective way to make an impact on the audience. Tension, or passion, changes the shape of an actor's body. Imagine a box on a porch. A character walks up to it and opens it. In it is an abandoned infant. What will the sight of that do to the actor's body? Or the character walks up and opens the box, and in it is his enemy's head, or his loved one's head. At a key moment in the story, the tension in the actor's body will create a shape that is a perfect physical embodiment of a dramatic moment. That is a jest. The actor holds the baby close. The character reels from the sight of the human head. The jest is the perfect communication of what that moment means carved into the air. The audience reads that pure body language and understands it utterly. When a play is built with tension from one key plot point to the next, then each of these events will be illustrated by a jest. This is not something you write in the stage directions. When the tension is sufficiently high and the character sufficiently impassioned, the actor's interpretation of the moment will create a jest. The director will shape the ensuing stage picture for optimum effect. If the tension isn't there, then trying to make those picture moments, those jests, will be like trying to carve sand. If you keep the tension strong, hold the energy lines of every aspect of your play tight in your hands, the play will, to some degree, stage itself from jest to jest. Once you have that tension built into your plot and your characters, and passion informs the lines of every character, look to your scene work. Theater, on the page, is one-dimensional. When read aloud around a table, it gains a second dimension. But where it really needs to work is on its feet, on the stage. Now it has three dimensions. You can add additional aspects by making use of every element the stage can offer, both inside and outside of the audience's minds. Check that you've used every corner of the stage and every possible use of all your set pieces, up, down, around, inside and out. Sound is another aspect. Music and the soundscape can add depth to various realities in your play. Mine every bit of theatricality into your play. Keep an eye out for theatrical elements you can add to your scenes. Since the audience has already agreed to pretend that what is going on on stage is real, the playwright can create any reality simply by stating that it is so. Characters can pass one another on stage in different centuries. The room, or just the character's mind, can be haunted by various ghosts or memories. The stage is a limited medium. These parameters make the playwright crafty. We make up for the lack of helicopters, crowds of extras, car chases, and ever-changing scenes by the momentum of our scenes, the strength of our story, and the depths of our characters. But whatever setting you give yourself to work with, whatever characters you devise, check that you have fully mined them for every use, so that you are using all your resources to surprise, delight, and move your audience. 
In the next lesson, we will discuss getting unstuck. If you would like more information on playwriting, my manual, Playwriting the Merciless Craft, Comprehensive Techniques for Mastering Beginning, Intermediate, and Advanced Playwriting, is available from Amazon as both an ebook or a paperback. If you have questions or comments, or are interested in a workshop or master's class, you can contact me through my website at thecarolwolf.com.